Ooh, ooh, ooh. Nazgul is gonna dive in. Welcome, my lords, to the map Hara Driver for a 1v1 video commentary for BFME 1 on a page 2.22 in an L Classico matchup between Good and Evil Mordor versus Gondor. All right. So basically, Mordor has to defend the Slammer Mill. That's the main premise, main goal. But the distance from this location to this location is quite short. So this may this you know mill in the front is going to be always under threat. But for that reason, you have always a settlement which is always far away. So even if you lose this, the game won't be over. But in a dream world, you want to be still protecting this as long as you potentially can. Gondor opening with a blacksmith and a farm, and also using the Hobbit Peregrine took to capture this settlement over here. And the soldiers are able to deal with the orcs in a one-on-one -on -one situation, no problemo. Heal has been picked, and I has been picked. Gollum can stall this a bit, but Gollum is kind of weak a little bit, so now without the orc spot, and he needs to wait for more orcs before engaging on this fight. He's going to use those lumber mill workers to repair the structure instantly. You can do this now even with the wood in your hands, because they have a new command, which is the repair command. So you can press T and repair the structure. There comes the Eye of Sauron, and heal is going to be used from the Gondor player too. Nice clumping over here. And Gollum is not able to tank too much damage because he's quite low and the Hobbit is going to make the difference. Now the Hobbit is an essential hero in those situations because the second he gets level 2, he will be able to one-shot the orcs, okay? And the Lumber Mill here will eventually be destroyed and the soldier is almost level 2 as well. Um, the Hobbit is diving in a little bit too deep there. He might be taken down by this one and he needs to get away, get away. But the workers are outrunning the Hobbit. And he will be taken down. Now with the Hobbit being dead, there is no real counter to the Haradrims. But, you know, even if he loses the soldiers, it's still a great start for the Gondor. He was able to stall this for a long time and still be able to destroy the Lumber Mill. Which will delay the creeping from the Mordor a lot. In the meantime, he has built one more farm into, into the base in the stable. And the first Knight of Gondor is going to be recruited. That's the build order from the Mordor player, Orc Pit, Haradrim Palace, and a Slaughterhouse, so the eco is not looking too hot. The banner is running for his life. <laughs> He's trying to get away. Um, now, when, you, when it comes to the creeping options, I would always creep this one, which will reward you before additional settlement. This creep over here is going to give you only money and power points, which is still very good. Oh, nice trample. I mean quite <laughs> unlucky though because he will eventually lose those Gondonites if he doesn't pay attention to them now they are kind of useless they need to get all the way back to the bees and heal up at the well good thing is that he was able to save one of the level two soldiers that means they can be used later on to deal with the rune soldiers the soldiers of rune once the harader and is level two and he's trying to creep the top side this lumber mill in the front is exposed will be taken down by the knights of condor no problemo and mordor's eco is not looking too hot but, you know, there is always hope. Gondor's base is looking much better. He's going to go for the third knight immediately. And pretty much two of them can continuously stomp the enemy units. And one of them can always creep the entire map. There are plenty of maps uh, creeps on this map. So you can easily get the power points you need for the Gan of the White or for the Grey Company Special Summon. Okay, so Mordor will take this one down. That's good. That's going to be his third settlement. So remember, each Lumber Mill will give you the wood bonus, making your structures cheaper, which Mordor needs, because he still needs a Troll Keech here. You, you need to go for the Trolls against Mordor, against Gondor, especially after such a start. There is no world in which you can rush the Nazgul. But Gondonites are not paying attention. They are getting bullied by the Haradrims from a safe distance. Haradrims are like a counter to the Knights of Gondor too. With the spear throw, they are dealing hella damage. So, but the thing about the Haradrims is they are a very unique unit in this game. So they have like a range. And the second the enemy units are getting out of the range, your shots won't connect anymore and you will deal no damage. So he will reclaim the settlement, no problemo. That's going to be his third lumber mill. The base is looking much better now. And with the rune soldiers up on the field, he should have an easier time protecting those lumber mills and kind of contesting the creeping from his opponent. There are still plenty of creeps left. Outpost will be captured by the Gondor player at the bottom right side. And the outpost at the top left will be captured by the Mordor player Necromancer. He has also Haradrims on top of the outpost. They are shooting down the Gondor Knights. 
and Gondor will still be able to take the creep and also get away from this, right? Yeah, he should be able to get away. A few more shots. They're very bad damage, but, you know, they can always turn and fight. In the meantime, the orcs are destroying this front farm, which is almost level 3. Would be nice if Gondor is able to protect this, because level 3 farms are giving you way more resources compared to a level 2 uh, farm, and he was barely able to save it. So all just upon the field, creep has been secured by the Mordor player. The money will be taken by Mordor too. There comes a trample into the Haradrims. The Gondonites once again getting away with only taking a few damage. But they have an outpost now there. Which means he could go for the well. And if you are asking why he's going for triple statue, it's because of the hero bonus. Now he gets 30% hero bonus. He has one in the beast and three at the outpost. It's the maximum you can get. Which will make your Gandalf cost only 4410 instead of 6300. So it's a almost 2000 resources discount, which is pretty good. Its outpost here will give Mordor lots of money. He has now three Lambrimis under his control, plus an outpost. His money should be looking very good now with the addition to the industry. And the runes are pressuring, orcs are pressuring from the main castle and from the outpost. Remember, orc pit level 2, you will have a fast production speed of the orcs. Each 25 seconds, there will be an orc battalion, which will cost you nothing but time. But your opponent has to pay attention to them to not lose the entire map in a few seconds. Also, Faramir has been recruited. The combination of Faramir and Gandalf is pretty deadly when it comes to dealing with a Nazgul, the warning arrow, and the Easter light from Gandalf is able to one-shot the fell beast, the Nazgul, from 100 to 0. There are, still two, uh, there are still one creep remaining on the map, this one over here. And we hear the mountain trolls joining the battlefield. Now Faramir is going to deal with these runes eventually. When they are in the formation, they are taking way less damage. But the second they leave the formation, Faramir is going to hit like an absolute truck. The knights... Have to be careful around this location. Don't lose them. Oh, barely, barely, barely. Now they are getting slowed down by the trampling. There were three knights. We'll be taken down by the Easterlings. Look at this. A mountain troll is a mean one. So now Gandalf is going to be on the field. That means the trolls have to be careful because without leadership, the trolls are very weak against Gandalf's spells. The Easter light is able to one shot them. And they are not cheap units, they cost 900 each, because he has not enough lamb, uh, slaughterhouses. You get the food bonus from the slaughterhouses up to 7, or 6 rather. So you get 30% discount from the slaughterhouses, which will make your trolls drop to 840. That's the minimum you need to pay for them, but the maximum you need to pay for them is 1200. Now Faramir is exposed, there comes the Eye of Sauron, getting punched in the face. Oh, lucky that he didn't get dropped from his horse and with the heal he was able to get away heal for the land uh, for i i think it's a good trade for mordor because this has only two minutes and 35 seconds cooldown the heal has three minutes cooldown he's going for the blast he will miss the blast the blast won't connect and again the orcs are very annoying but he went for boromir that's a very good choice boromir was able to single creep, solo creep this layer get the solo experience and get to level four Boromir against Mordor is a very good investment into the lead game because that's the only way besides this teacher how Gondor can get additional damage leadership. The outpost under attack with four trolls, but again without Drummer Troll, they will be in danger the second Gandalf moves there and he's on his way. Easter can one shot. This troll here will definitely die. Boom chakalaka. Go back to the shadow, troll. But Mordor has lots of money in the bank, so he has five points. 2k needs only 3k for his witch king witch king will be another powerhouse for the mordor faction tankier way tankier compared to a nazgul dealing more damage to the heroes compared to a nazgul and most importantly giving huge leadership bonuses in a large area this is specialty of witch king making the trolls way beefier way stronger and it will stack with the drama troll it will stack with the eye of sauron and later on even with the darkness so your trolls Every single one of them are going to become raid bosses. But orcs everywhere. You see, they are under constantly pressuring, gaining power points passively without costing. So that's why the gunner player has to find a way to destroy this outpost to cut the orc production. Very important. 
Here comes the Lightning Sword to catch up those Souls of Rune, of Guard. Only one of them is going to be remaining, but they have no self-recovery when they are level 2. Main Banner is a very underrated upgrade for the Mortal Faction. It only costs you 400 now, and upgrading your units doesn't cost you really a lot anymore. Only 225, which is quite affordable. And you need to always think, you need to invest for 225 for this to be level 2, which will make them way stronger, or you just ditch them and go for another one for 350. So the math is always in favor of the banner. Witch King has been recruited, boys. With the Witch King, Mordor will have an easier time to defend the map control against those Knights of Gondor. Remember, Ganoff has to hit both the spells on him. He needs to hit both Lightning Sword and Easter Light if he wants to be able to solo kill the Witch King. Hobbit. <laughs> they are bringing the Hobbits to Mordor. <laughs> Very green took one does not simply walk into the trolls, my friend. All right, again, archer range not level two. It means no fire arrows, no rangers. He never went for the archer range in the beast, but he went for the marketplace. You can see the glow around the blacksmith, so he's getting more resources. They will hit level three faster. And with level three, Gondor is going to get lots of money. So, blacksmith with the iron ore plus level three, so they will give you like 30 resources, which is kind of crazy. Because you need to always think that Gondor is the most available spots in the castle. More than Rohan, more than Mordor, and more than Isengard. The Witch King got chunked by the Easter Light, but he will recover, no problem. Ganaf is, I believe, level 5 still. Let me take a look. Almost level 6. No more creeps left. Level 3 farm. Boromir is solo experiencing here by killing those orcs, getting to closer to the level 7. For another power spy for the Captain of Gondor. This and this is able to stack, so even though it's only for a short duration of 15 seconds, Boromir is able to single-handedly offer you 100% damage to this ship, which is crazy. You will deal hella damage. He was able to catch up the Drummer Troll. Did the Witch King die? No, the Witch King didn't die. He is recovering still. And Gandalf was able to kill a Drummer Troll and get one step closer to the level 6. Now here's Tom Morka. Going for the workshop next, putting arts on the wall, just preparing for the ultimate camp mode, which he can afford to do because he has still decent map control, level 3 farms outside, um, level 2 farm here, level 2 farm here, and he has plenty of blacksmiths in the base for even greater resource income. So now from this point of on, he needs to invest, of course, money into the towers, they cost 800 each. He, sto he sold the storm worker. When you don't do this, when you don't sell your storm worker, your towers will be cheaper. So it's most of the time it's better to keep the storm worker until you fill up the beast with towers, then demolish it afterwards. Okay. Now we will see the late game between Gondor and Mordor. Um, with Gondor being super strong with the bottom leadership. Okay, that's gonna be the main difference maker in this late game situation. Mordor has the outpost under his control, he has plenty of trolls. But in order to break through this camp of Gondor, you need more than Thralls. You need more stronger uh, siege weapons. In this case, we are talking about stuff that can outrange the towers. There is only one structure, one unit Mordor has in the inventory to do this. That's going to be the Siege Wargs catapults. Easter that has been used. Witch King has to fly there very, very soon. Uh, Gondor has six power points in the bank. It looks like you want to save up for the, for the Cloud Break. It means no Eagles, which is better in more situations than the Cloud Break. Because especially now, as Mordor has nothing that can shoot, Eagles have no counter. They can deal devastating amount of damage to their opponent. But I think the Mordor is afraid of a potential Eagle Special Summon. That's why he's preparing. The only reason why Mordor would ever need Fire Arrows against Gondor is because of the eagles. When there is no eagles, you don't need fire arrows. Your trolls are strong enough, they cost 20 command points each, you have 500 command points, so you can actually get so many trolls up on the field. Building up towers, putting on some trebuchet around the wall, just preparing for the <laughs> for the ultimate defense, just like in the Black Gate, you know, survive until Frodo drops the ring into the Mount Doom. Who now has the strength to fight against the forces of trolls and witch king? No man can kill them. Mordor army versus Gondor army. 
This reminds me to the old good days when I was playing against Hard AI as Condor. That's how my base was looking like. Arts on the wall, Stormworker, and Faramir, Boromir next to each other, waiting to be attacked. And my Ganlaf lurking around the map, trying to fish power points. Like exactly the same situation I'm telling you. <clears throat> okay, some of them have the rocks in their hands. The one with the rocks super underrated because they can destroy the tower in a few seconds. I think two rocks or maybe even three maximum with this leadership can actually one shot these towers. So all you need to do is be patient. But he now sees the Stormworker. It's a tilter right there. Let me tell you that much. It's not fun to play against Stormworker, but it's a required thing against Mordor. Um, because if your normal towers won't hurt those trolls anymore, He's demolishing the siege war, I mean the furnaces, going for double siege war eventually. He has lots of money. He's going for double siege. The problem he will encounter eventually is the lack of command points. He's only 500. So he will eventually be forced to sell off some of the units. What you can do in the lead game, because they only cost one command point, but still. What you can do is replace the lumber mills with slaughterhouses. So you save up like 40 something command points. Because each lumber mill has around about 8 workers working on it. And he has like four or five of them. Oh, he's gonna catch him. No, he catches the witch king. Oh, and he cancels it. Ah, uh, he cancels it. Oh, what is happening? Oh my god. Oh my, oh my god. Oh my god. Did he heal him? No, he didn't heal him. So lucky. He was blind focused on the witch king with the Easter light. But he was kind of beating off the, the, the darkness and the Elf Sauron from his opponent. So it's okay, I guess. <laughs> Not bad. Because darkness is kicking in now for only um, 2 I mean, it's still 2 minutes and 40 seconds. It's a very long duration of the darkness. But each second he's staying idle, the potential is being wasted. Gondor has still 3 farms outside. Again, they are not regular farms. They give you more money. So think about this level 3 farm over here. It will give you... I don't see it. Am I blind? We can use that I think I'm blind. 31. It will give you 31 instead of 25. That's 6 more. And it all it works on every resource building. So 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48 resources more. Every tick of the structure. That's why he has so much money. He has 2.4k with this little map control and very soon he will have like 10k because his command points are filled. Now he's gonna sell those skinny archers of Gondor, even the level 3 one and he's gonna replace them with the rangers. So rangers, Boromir, Faramir, level 4, Boromir level 6 and Trebuchet. Trebuchet now you might ask why Trebuchet? It's because Trebuchet is actually, actually very good against um, trolls. They have like this huge damage which kind of counters the trolls. But most importantly, it will knock them down on the ground, disabling their movement, which gives you the chance to free fire on them. So your towers can shoot more, your heroes can deal more damage because they are disabled, they can't move. The Farami is going to be shot, but remember Farami's warning arrow is actually dealing bonus damage to the catapults. So it will one shot one of the catapults if it connects, boom. And now, I mean, it's you can't really use it every second, it has cooldown of 30 seconds. The Nazgul is getting chunked big time. Oh, but he's exposing those things to the Gandalf. And you see Gandalf and Faramir are able to stall this. Again, what you can do with the trolls is throw rocks, go back. Throw rocks, go back. Because Gondor is not that rich. If you destroy these towers a few times, he can't really replace them. Keep in mind that it costs 800 each. Now, these combos are not adding really too much to the table. Again, their only existence is because of the potential eagles. I mean, we know that Gondor didn't go for the eagles, but what we know, Necromancer doesn't know. He doesn't see the power points from his opponent like we can. Fully unleash Mordor with two Nazgûls and the Witch King against Campy Gondor. Plenty of trolls on an open battlefield. It's super difficult to deal with them. But remember, he has the Cloudbreak. So you can slow them down and reduce their armor big time. Now the traps are moving out. You see the traps damage is kind of crazy. 
The trolls have to disengage. The troll is angry, raging. There comes the blast, but he needs to cancel it. He doesn't cancel it. Beautiful trample into the orc combos with the Knights of Gondor. The Kata has been destroyed too. Now the traps are shooting full commitment. The Nazgul is gonna dive in. Beautiful quadra kill for the Nazgul with this. There comes the Easter Elite to take down one of the birds from the sky. But again, that's the full potential of the of the release of the anger of Mordor, boys. In a, in a fight like this, where 10 trolls are charging at you and 2, 3 Nazgul's flying on your face, it's very hard when your heroes or your units are not level 8, 9, 10, you really can't fight this. There comes the Lightning Sword, once again he will be able to catch 4 of this, another quadrant kill for the hero Gandalf, gaining power points like crazy, we have 5 power points for both the players, but keep in mind that Balrog is still 15 away, while AOD only 5. Now Gandalf is going ham, boom, boom, boom. He's gonna use the shield bubble to mitigate most of the damage. He has to be used just to make sure, and he will get away from this location. And catapults are getting destroyed over and over again. Triple siege works. And now after seeing the cloud break, Mordor needs to know, okay, he won't go for the eagles, at least not anytime soon. He will try to rush up the AOD first, which he's right with when he's assuming that. Mord Gondor still needs four and a half power points. Here is the twist though. AOD is not as strong against Mordor as it is against Isengard. Because AOD can't really fight or target the flying heroes like Nazgûl. So even if you go for the AOD, you can only kill trolls and catapults. But the Witch King and the Nazgûl will be untouched. So you need firepower or eagles or Gandalf. Again, expose catapults. The trolls are finally moving. Okay. I mean, he's gonna break the wall eventually, right? He's gonna break it eventually. But you can blast also with Gandalf, you don't know. With Gandalf's damage against this catapult is so difficult, oh, so high. Holy. He's level 8, almost 9. Oh, nice beat here with the bubble. Kind of beating them into the tower range. Okay. I mean, this wall is pretty badly damaged, but he's going to repair it too. For 1500. <laughs> this is camping. This is camping. I mean, I personally dislike camping, but the way the game is designed, it's, it's based off leadership, right? So when you don't, when you know you can't really fight the army of Mordor in the super late game, here we are talking about basically 20 Aragorns charging at your face if, who are faster than Aragorns, hitting harder than Aragorn um, it's difficult for this few combos, I mean for this few archers to fight against this it's just difficult Boromir, if Boromir gets level 7 it's a different story throbbing rocks, there comes the darkness Boromir knocking them down on the ground, now the throws, boom 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 Oh, but Boromir is able to knock them so hard on the ground, actually. Holy. Hit Faramir if you can. Faramir is getting knocked down on the ground. Faramir will not make it to the Gondor. This time, Boromir is the son who is able to survive. And in the meantime, the Gondor Knights were able to kill, destroy two of the Siege Wargs. That's pretty good. Eight power points for Gondor and almost eight power points for Mordor. So Gondor is only two power points away from the EOD and Mordor is still 12. The reason being for this main, for this big command point differential is of course Gondor doesn't really lose a lot. It's Mordor who is trying to siege and forcing... Oh, it didn't connect. Uh, you need to destroy this level 3 farm there. This level three, level 2, 3 farms outside are generating too much free money for... Oh, they are committing again. Oh, big commitment, Fiesta. Power points, like, take a look into the power points from Gondor. There comes the for Gondor ability from Boromir. Now he has 11 power points already. And the catapult, okay. Gondor's defense cannot be broken. That's how you play Mordor. I mean, Gondor against Mordor. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a tilter. But I hope you still enjoyed this. If you did, you know what to do. See you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.